Hey, it's Tom here and welcome back to the channel. So earlier this week I sat down and watched an old Joel Greenblatt lecture from 2005 that he did at Columbia University. Now uh, I did that because it was actually recommended to me from none other than Investing with Frank after our whole punch card stream last week. And if you don't know already, uh, Joel Greenblatt is the author of these two books. So uh, the little book that beats the market or this updated version, the little book that still beats the market. And also you can be a stock market genius too. a couple relatively cheesy titles, but um, <laughs> I can assure you the content in those books is very, very good. Uh, and one of the things that really fascinated me about this talk from Joel Greenblatt is it wasn't your traditional finance lecture. He wasn't going through a bunch of theoretical concepts and trying to explain uh, complex mathematical formulas to the students or anything. Uh, one of the things that I really love about Joel Greenblatt is his intense focus on simplicity and just kind of getting to the core of an investment thesis. And basically the way he approached that talk was he used three different examples of write-ups from a website called the Value Investors Club. Now, if you don't know already, the Value Investors Club is basically like a forum where value investors can post write-ups of their best ideas. Uh, um, and it's free and publicly available and you can go and log on and see all of those write-ups from value investors. The only catch to that is that if you don't contribute at least two write-ups per year yourself, um, you basically see all of the latest write-ups at a delay. So you can't get uh, immediate access to new write-ups as they kind of come on the site. And the other thing that the Value Investors Club does is that two times per month, they will award $5,000 to uh, the best sort of recent write-up in the last two weeks. So um, that's kind of a bit of incentive for investors to be willing to share some of their best ideas. Now, like I say, during this talk, Joel Greenblatt shared three write-ups from the Value Investors Club, uh, all of which were from the early 2000s. So this talk was given in 2005, and he was looking at write-ups from around 2000 to sort of 2003. And uh, in each of the three cases, he was sharing write-ups that had worked out very well. So um, obviously not all the write-ups that go on the Value Investors Club work. Not every uh, investment people make is going to be super successful. Uh, but in this case, all three of these investments were successful and uh, the investment thesis was quite short um, it was really simple there weren't a bunch of complex mathematics or um, unusual insights that you couldn't have gathered without just reading the public filings uh, they were pretty clear concise kind of straightforward write-ups on why this particular stock is undervalued and one of the even more impressive things is that all three of the write-ups that Joel Greenblatt shared in this talk uh, all came from this Value Investors Club account called Charlie479. They were all actually from the same person. And uh, Charlie479, his account is still one that you can look up on the Value Investors Club today. You'll see he has a total of seven write-ups on his account. He hasn't contributed for many years at this point, but um, he has seven write-ups on the account and six of them have won the sort of best idea award that gets handed out every two weeks. So he's had six lots of five grand to sort of reward him for writing the best ideas for that particular period of time. And after a bit of digging, I actually jumped across to another value investing forum called the Corner of Berkshire and Fairfax and basically tried to do some digging on who Charlie479 actually is and why why isn't he writing anything on the Value Investors Club these days. And um, that actually kind of led me down this rabbit hole of uh, not only figuring out who Charlie479 was, which I will share in a sec and you may have already seen by the title, um, but it also led me to find two other uh, accounts from quite well-known investors and very well-known investors in fact um, and uh, I basically in this video want to go back and look at some of the older write-ups and also share the account names so that you can go back and look at some of the write-ups from these now very well-known investors. So who is Charlie479? Well, uh, turns out it's none other than Norbert Liu of Punch Card Capital. Now, uh, after seeing these write-ups on the Value Investors Club, uh, Joel Greenblatt actually reached out to Charlie479, who turned out to be Norbert Liu, uh, to basically meet Norbert in person. And uh, Norbert Liu had been working in a few different jobs in sort of the finance world after initially actually studying as an engineer. And he eventually kind of came out of those meetings with Joel Greenblatt uh, with the ability to start up a hedge fund. He'd actually been managing about $60,000 of his mother's savings, which uh, over a handful of years he'd turned into about a million dollars with the help of some of the stocks that he's written up on the Value Investors Club. 
and Joel Greenblatt and his sort of uh, investment firm Gotham Asset Management actually seeded Norbert Liu with an initial pool of capital in order to start Punch Card Capital. And uh, if we fast forward through to today, so this all happened sort of in the early 2000s, if we fast forward through to today uh, and look up a 13F for Norbert Liu and Punch Card Capital, uh, we'll see that he's managing over $300 million. So it's been a massively successful run for Norbert Liu. Um, I'll also share actually an interview down in the description below. Uh, Norbert Liu is a pretty private individual from what I can gather, but there is uh, about a 30 page uh, written article about Norbert Liu and his journey, and it mentions the Value Investors Club and this sort of story, uh, and also shares some of Norbert Liu's returns. Now I mentioned earlier there are two other accounts that I want to share from the Value Investors Club, so let's get straight to it. Well, the first one uh, is an account by the name of Nish697, and it turns out that this is none other than Monish Pabrai. And um, it is incredibly interesting to be able to go back and read some of these old write-ups from Monish Pabrai. Uh, having scanned through a few of them, obviously Monish Pabrai's strategy has changed a bit today from what it was in the early 2000s. He was much more of a deep value cigar butt style investor in the early 2000s. Now he's more interested in sort of buying into long-term compounder type businesses. Um, but nonetheless, it's really fascinating to go back and look at these write-ups. And it's also interesting to to sort of see the differences in writing style across some of these famous investors. Uh, in the case of Norbert Liu, uh, he was often listing uh, really good businesses, sometimes cigar, cigar butts, but also often listing things like a catalyst and things that uh, he thought were really going to drive the stock up over the long term uh, or even just in the next couple of years. So one of Norbert Liu's most famous write-ups and probably the most famous write-up on the Value Investors Club ever uh, is a company by the name of NVR. So uh, Norbert Liu actually started buying into NVR, which is a home builder in the late 90s he wrote it up on the value investors club in around 2002 and if i look at what nvr has done from 2002 through to today it's been incredibly successful and one of the reasons for its success is it's sort of capital light business model it's a very profitable very high return on equity type business and they have also been buying back shares religiously so um, since Norbert Liu's write-up, they've bought back more than 50% of the shares outstanding from 2002, 2003 until today. But if I then go and read some of the old write-ups from someone like Monish Pabrai, uh, really there is never a catalyst listed. There, uh, It's much more of a Warren Buffett or Ben Graham style approach where in the short term the market is a voting machine, in the long term it's a weighing machine. Uh, and he finishes basically all his write-ups by saying uh, something to the effect of value is its own catalyst and uh, cash flows will drive the eventual returns of the stock price. So again, really interesting to go back and look at some of those old write-ups from Monish Pabrai. I must say a lot of the companies that he wrote up really aren't public anymore, but there's some that are. Uh, Shaw Communications, for example, is one that he wrote up in late 2003, uh, expecting a sort of 150 to 200% return over the next couple of years or so, uh, which is pretty much what played out. Uh, maybe took a couple years longer than Pabrai had anticipated, um, but certainly that worked out as a good investment, assuming that he got out before the financial crisis which uh, of course it's hard to know these things just looking at a random write-up from 2003 uh, but very interesting to see kind of the thoughts that were running through these investors heads at the time now the third and final account on value investors club that i want to share and again one that doesn't have a lot of write-ups uh very recently the last one is from like the early 2000s so <laughs> i think this account is pretty much dead but the individual investor is still uh very much kind of in the public eye and someone who you, who you will certainly know and uh the account name is michael 99 and it turns out that this is actually michael burry who uh, was made famous by shorting the housing market in 2008 and 2009 and was of course played by Christian Bale in the movie The Big Short. Now Michael Burry also has about seven write-ups under the account Michael99 on the Value Investors Club, uh, and about three of them actually won the Best Write-Up Award, so you'll see the little green W next to, next to the write-ups. Uh, unfortunately, the latest write-up we have from Michael99's account is from 2002, so uh, close to 20 years since, he, since he's written um, an investment thesis up and shared it on the Value Investors Club. But again, one of the things that kind of continues to stand out to me across all of these write-ups is that the investment case is very simple. And again, there is really not a lot of information in these write-ups that isn't publicly available, that you couldn't just read in a filing or uh, figure out by doing a small amount of kind of scuttlebutt within the industry.
So for example, in October 2002, Michael Burry wrote up a stock called Industrious Bachoco, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, um, but basically this was the leading poultry producer in Mexico. And uh, the thesis, again, was really straightforward. It was basically a good business, something that earns sort of 12, 13% return on equity, and it was incredibly cheap and uh, had kind of net cash around as well. So this is this is what was sort of the numbers at the time for this particular stock. Market cap was 426 million. They had 186 million in cash and 24 million in debt. So uh, cash far outweighs the debt, which gives you an enterprise value of 264 million. So you're effectively paying 264 million for the company, uh, and the net income of the business was 100. And four million dollars so if you do uh, some basic maths on that you basically figure out that the company is trading at about two to three times earnings uh, earnings fluctuate a little bit year to year um, but it's a good business leading kind of low-cost poultry producer in Mexico trading at about two or three times earnings and the other thing that you get as a sort of additional margin of safety other than just that really cheap valuation on an earnings basis is that the shareholders equity was about 870 million dollars and pretty much all of it was tangible in other words if you wanted to wind up the company you could probably sell those assets for about 870 million dollars uh, and of course i just mentioned the market cap was about 400 million dollars so you're getting it at about half of its tangible equity or half of its liquidation value and from Michael Burry writing up that stock in late 2002 through to say five years later in late 2007, uh, that stock ended up being about a three or four X return. So I'll put a, a chart up here. This is still a public company if you wanna go check it out now by any chance. Uh, actually, if I just look at some of the surface level numbers, it's currently trading at about eight times earnings. So uh, nowhere near as cheap as the two or three times earnings when Michael Burry was looking at it. Uh, but nonetheless, again, really interesting to go back and kind of get the thoughts of these now really successful and really famous investors. Of course, um, if we fast forward five years after doing that right up to 2007, uh, Michael Burry had other probably much larger bets on than he did on this Mexican poultry producer, as you well know from the big short and how he sort of set up to short the housing market during the financial crisis. But I find it absolutely fascinating to go back and read the thoughts of these great investors. So that's really it for me for this one. Uh, I just kind of wanted to share some of those stories and also share some of these accounts, these three accounts on Value Investors Club if you want to go and check that out. Uh, Value Investors Club is, is a resource that I use. I've never actually contributed to the Value Investors Club, uh, I must say, so I do sort of get the write-ups on a bit of a delay. Um, but I think it's something that I may actually start doing. I must must say I don't have a lot of great investment ideas at the moment. Uh, I probably manage to track down one every six or 12 months, but um, I'll maybe keep an eye on what I can track down and potentially start contributing to that. And maybe I'll put some sort of cryptic name and you guys can, <laughs> can do a bit of investigative work to try Try and track down which one's me I, I, I don't quite know um, but I just find it absolutely fascinating to read some of these old write-ups one of the things that just sticks out really really clearly to me is that even the best investors have a pretty simple thesis on why these stocks are going to work basically they're either good businesses or reasonable businesses and they're trading at a very cheap price or they're poor businesses and they're trading at an extremely cheap price and really it's a lot of information that we could figure out ourselves if we were to do the same level of work on the company i think a lot of people put these famous investors on pedestals and maybe think that they're a lot smarter or harder working or know a lot more than we do and maybe they are in many cases i'm sure they are in many cases but um with a lot of investments it really doesn't have to be particularly complicated um and every now and again something just comes along that kind of hits you over the head as being ridiculously cheap and and um you know, trading at a substantial discount to intrinsic value, which of course is exactly what we're looking for. So um, with all that said, that's it for me for this one. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit like and hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.